Gang, baby. Gang, baby. Gang. Triple gang, boy. We out here triple ganging. Getting ready for gang's giving, son. Um, happy day to everybody. Happy day to everybody. I hope somebody, I hope, I hope you woke up today and, and somebody loved you. And, and you know who I really hope that I hope, I hope, I hope it was yourself. Cause that's the, that's the kicker. You know, I meet a stranger off, you know, I'll hug them. You have somebody, dang, you know, fuck, I'll dang hug, I'll hug a dang hitchhiker. You know, I'll put, if, if, if there was a hitchhiker and he put his hands in his pockets, I'd put my hand in his pockets at the same time. Just play hot pocket in there. No, no, no rubbing or nothing. Just be there with him. You know, cause you don't know a hitchhiker until you've, you know, walked a day or handed a mile in his pockets. You know, it's like, I'm just saying it could be a hitchhiker and I'll go, I'll stand, I'll, you know, I'll hug him. I'll hug him fast because they're dirty. They got a lot of that interstate dust, you know, a lot of, um, those big trucks throw up a bunch of dirt. And if you're right there, H hiking, baby, a lot of it damn get lodged on you. You'll have a sand dune of just, of just cigarette ash and interstate dirt just lodged on, you know, in the, in the, in the uh, crevasse of your neck. If you are out there hitchhiking. But, you know, I, I'm amazed sometimes at my ability to be loving towards strangers. But then lacking that same, um, that same compassion for myself or sometimes for people that are close to me. You know, it's like I'll give a, you know, I'll take my chances on a stranger. The devil's Rochambeau, baby, a hitchhiker. I'll take my chances out there. Before I'll do a, before I'll easily, ex, you know, um, what are we talking about? Oh, loving. Before I'll be loving to, to someone who is already close to me or is built in my family a lot of times. It's been in my past. And that's not my present. Uh, but it has been my past. Um, anyway, not, not a downer there, just interesting. And it's that time of year, you know, to really, you know, it's that damn time of year to damn, I mean, kiss grandma, kiss that bitch in the kitchen, you know, just, and I don't even look, if she's had a glass of wine, put a damn blindfold on grandma and damn kiss her. Put it, say, look. What was grandpa's favorite song? Put that bitch on and lock on her. You don't be perving out on her. Don't be trying to touch all in her slip or, or, uh, you know, or damn split a thing of dentine with her or whatever, or, uh, effident or whatever it's called, effident. Don't try to, don't be, don't get all pervacious. But I think, look, if you want to, Put on your, sneak on your granddaddy's favorite shirt if he's passed away, I mean. And put a blindfold on grandma, slow dance in the kitchen. Let her put her head on your chest, just be that, say, hey, I know you miss grandpa, let me, could I, could I slow dance with you for a minute? No touching, I just want you to put a little Old Spice in that, in a, make you a little pond of, you know, where your clavicle makes that little pond right there on your neck. If you're hungry, if you leaned out, you can get that little, you make your little puddle right there. Put your little old spice in that bitch. And get grandma out there in the kitchen, dance with her. Do something for somebody, you know, that's what I want to do. Little things, see my sister, give her a hug. Text my brother in the morning, telling him, tell him I love him. No reason at all. Just the simple, the simple fact that he that he graced my heart, that the idea of him 
that he visited just my brain. You know, it's not, it's, you know, so I hope, yeah, I hope, and not everybody has a family member and I hope that you do have somebody that you, that you love or that loves you or that you're able to love yourself on this holiday time. Cause we need it and it's tough and it is what it is, baby. Um, but I'm so grateful to be sitting here with you and, uh, we got a nice little episode here and, um, and yeah, I'm just feeling full, man. I'm feeling full of hope. As much as I don't want to be, sometimes I don't want to be hopeful. You know, there's a part of me, there's a part of me sometimes don't want to be hopeful. You won't see me down there by the hope pond, putting hope meat on my hope hook. And just hoping I catch something you want. So I don't want to be hopeful sometimes. Sometimes I'd rather be a curmudgeon. Just just talking in four wheel drive everything. My voice, I got a V10 in my, in my throat. Diesel. I got diesel tonsils. And I'm just every, I want to be hard. Because it's been it's hard sometimes to be hopeful. It's hard if you feel like life has burnt you a little. If you feel like the past wasn't what it was supposed to be for you. You don't want to be hopeful anymore. You want to have that chip on your shoulder. You want to be a shoulder chip baby. Out there chip chopping. And just slanging chips off your shoulder. Step right up. Who needs a chip, huh? Chips on one shoulder, dip on the other. You're just a damn little condiment. You're just a little damn appetizer at that point. But yeah, I'm more willing, I feel like, these days to try and be hopeful. Just be hopeful. I, don't, I didn't want to be hopeful because it's, it's if I admit to the world that I'm willing to have hope, Then that means I'm start, then that means I'm not willing to hold a grudge. And I sometimes I don't know if I'm a fr- I'm, I'm willing to let go of, of one of them enough to, gr- to, 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 to to grab onto that other one. Because that's where you gotta have some faith in there. When you're letting go of the grudges to grasp onto the hope. There's some space in there. And that's, man, it's the shortest bit of space, but damn, that is hard. It's hard to get, it's hard to get from one to the other. It's hard to let go of those, that path, that, those things that are, because they give me power. Oh, I'm angry about this. Fuck this bitch. These people are net and net. Oh, you know, my, oh, I remember them. That all gives me, it gives me something. I, well, I can always preach at them. But man, if I want to let go of that and reach for that hope, baby, damn, that things could be different. And open myself up to opportunity. It's been hard for me to do in my life, but today I'm hopeful that I'm on to something new. Come on, baby. Thank you for being here with me today. I love you. Whenever you're down, out in the cold, faithless and dark, your story's untold. Come take my hand and walk there with me. I know a place where we can be free. There is a light shining for you guiding your way helping you through and shadows and gloom are all that you see will find
calling you, calling you. It's the rising sun shining in the darkest alley. Can't you see you will be free? Come on, baby. There we go, and we got into that. And I'm, I'm, something you got to get into it, baby. Sometimes you got to get damn in there. You got to get in there. Which, bam, boy, sometimes you got man. Sometimes I wish I could put, just hide, just completely hide myself inside of my nuts. Don't you, God? Because I'll say this about nuts. People say this and that about nuts. Oh, them nuts are nasty. You hear women say that. Oh, look at them nasty nuts. He got them old, you know, he got them old 1990s nuts or whatever. Or you'll hear him say, oh, he got them, um, look at these cheap nuts. Some woman said that to me once about my nuts. I'm like, what? It's like, yeah, with your cheap ass nuts. And then she hit my nuts like that. Dude, and you know, if you have nuts, one quarter so if you have a quarter square inch of pressure on your nuts, bro, if a damn acorn falls off a seven inch tree and lands on your nuts, bro, it's going to hurt because your nuts is damn, oh, they are insecure. I'll say that. Your nuts are insecure. That's just what they are. But, um... But I'll say this, the skin on your nuts, damn, come on. Actually, be, that's a damn, be, that's a nice material. There's no doubt. If I had a couple of damn, um, some damn ball skin loafers or something to put my feet in while I watch television. Yeah, <laughs> oh boy. If I had some damn, uh, just some dang, um, you know, if I had me some some nut wall slippers in there, damn. A little bit of sheepskin on the outside, nut wall on the inside. Of a pair of dang Christmas slippers. Whoo. Santa's coming on my feet, boo-boo. I'm the, you, you, know, you ain't stopping me then. You ain't stopping me then, baby. If I had a damn nut coat. If somebody said, damn, what you wearing, boy? Me? Nut. Damn, that's 80% nut. 20% boss, baby. If I'm not, now I guess some people would get the nut skin uh, jacket or if you couldn't afford it, I'd get the vest. Because if you show up to a party, baby, and you damn, and you just vest it out, and some just sheer ball skin. If you're wearing a sheer ball. If you're wearing a sheer damn ball vest. Man, that bitch going to be nice. People, they're going to invite you in the back room to smoke you a joint or something. Or get you some bubbly back there. Where they keep the good stuff, you know. Because that's how it goes. It's like at a party, you go to somebody's party and everybody's having the normal amounts of things in the living room and it's, hey, come back over here. If you're doing well at the party, if you're socially acceptable or you're being, you know, enjoyable or you're dancing well or whatever, you brought a couple dames with you and they say, hey, come over here to the back room. And it could be anything. If it's just an eating party, it might be somebody invites you to the back room and they got, you know, just a damn little jar of homemade molasses and they just spooning people out. Get you a little half ounce, you know, get Debbie a little half ounce. But if they got you drugged, then it could be drugs, you know. <clears throat> hey, get you a little sack of this. <clears throat> get you a little gram of this. Give Tiffany a little bit of this. Oh, Ron likes them uppers. Make sure you upper Ron. You know, it's just, uh, <clears throat> but if you're wearing damn nuts, boy, come on, son. Now, the tough part is if you got cheap ball skin, you got that shit, you know, you'd have different grades of it. You'd have no hair. You'd have to go probably no hair, I think. But I don't know, bro. You show up with some damn Middle Eastern nut nuts, skin coat or little, even just a, 
Dude, if you had a damn nut skin neck brace, that bitch would be expensive. And if it had that hair on it, I th you got to keep the hair off of it, I think. I don't think I would want that. And then the different grades of it are the ages. You're like, damn, they got this shit off a 95-year-old. That's, you know. And then it's like, oh, this is, damn, you know, this is some good 45. You know, somebody unfortunately passed away, maybe cancer or, um, I don't know. Then this is where this whole theory is getting a little bit dark. I'm seeing that. But dang, boy, you telling me I don't show up with some Uggs made out of dick jug skin? Come on, baby. The devil's chicken nuggets, baby. Nuts. Nuts. Satan's tonsils, baby. You know what I'm talking about. Nuts. Uh, you nuts. But God forbid I roll up with a damn nut skin belt, fresh nut. Like, damn, look at that thing. And I would even, I'd go down probably off of, you know, I don't want to say off it, but off of Asian probably or brother. Depends on who, you know, what kind of, what you're going for. Because you could do some basic Caucasian nut, but I don't know. Anyway, this is getting a little dark. It's getting a little dark. Oh, happy Thanksgiving is what I'm trying to say. And happy Thanksgiving to you. Um, I am, uh, we got some new stuff. It's that time of year. We got some new items. If you want to get somebody a gift, you can check out the Hitter Hunting Club Collection. Now available at theovonstore.com. We got hoodies and orange and maroon and a couple different items over there. Uh, if you'd like to get out in the woods, we want you to feel like you can take uh, this past weekend with you. So we're grateful for that. We got camo hats. Um, if you like eating Thanksgiving with your family, but you want to hide from them at the same time. Because I've seen that, man. We got, you know, you'll have a guy who don't even want to be around his family that much. And so he'll be in a damn deer blind in his house. You'll have a guy in there in complete camouflage in his own at his own dinner table. You're like, hey, dad, please pass the... Uh, the pears and he picks a pear off his dang co his camo because you have like a, the, the camo he got was cheaper had like a tropical vibe to it and so you know it's got pine and like some you know bark but then it also have a couple damn fruit trees in it bruh you know like damn this camo is a little you know this camo don't this is that san francisco camo you know what i'm saying boy i'll have a damn fruit tree in that bitch some of his camo have a damn bird feeder on like, damn, this camo really, it's a three-dimensional camo. And he'll damn pick a pair and pass it over to his son at the dinner table because they're having trouble communicating and the man can't keep in touch with his own family. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about and I never have. I never really have. And, uh, and you guys have always been supportive of me for that or while I've done that. And thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I am. <clears throat> I'm feeling better. It's scary to say that a little bit, but I'm feeling better. Um, even just moments like today where I'm able to sit here and not feel too overwhelmed. Uh, and just, man, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for. Um, the people that have been coming out to shows, I'm grateful for the community we've had. Um, I'm looking forward. We're trying to get a new studio. It's not going to look completely different, okay? We're just trying to get a new facility um, a little bit because this one is, we're right close by the elevator. I mean, we are. I mean, that bitch is it's right there. So you can... You know, if somebody's going, I can hear somebody picking their nose in that bitch. So we don't want, you know, we just, and it rattled. We just want to get, and the bathrooms are right there. So it's like you can hear people in there. If some dude's gassed up or he got that body gas or that booty puff on him, you know, if he's burping out his ass, um, we can hear it. You know, the valet guy, they got one dude. He says he's valet, but he's not. He just... 
it's just a it's just a dude that gets angry at people for parking. So that's not that's kind of just an asshole kind of. But he uh he got a bad GI tract on him. I mean, he got a damn that dude's got some humidity in his butt because he'll you hear him in there, just cat foreign in there. He'll be up there. I mean, the weather channels show up when this dude hits the throne, baby. He's in there, butting out in there, doing booty, spraying large, baby. Praise God. Bless him, but I don't want to be right here on him. You know, I feel like a middleman sometimes between him and the rest, you know, because you hear him in there, damn trumpet of the swan. He's in there. You know, he's in there. He's in the damn, uh, in the Philharmonic in that bitch. He's in there playing that booty harmonica, dude. Tooting, you know what I'm saying? Fighting. Um, but we'll get into the episode. Uh, I'm going to let you know a couple of dates we got. Um, Louisville, Indianapolis, Shreveport, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, Houston, Houston, Texas, Houston, Texas. Houston, my bad. The H, they had lowercase h here. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. New York City, New York. You know, when they say it twice like that in the title, just because they're, you know, they're just assholes. That's just how it, you know. Well, hey, welcome to New York City, New York. Like, I, I, I heard you the first time, guy. Uh, you know, I heard you. I, we both heard you. You heard you, too. You heard you. Um, and then Austin, Texas. Uh, those are all dates from January 25th to June 3rd. All those are at theovon.com slash T-O-U-R. Please make sure you go through theovon.com slash tour because you're going to get accurately priced. What else happened? Oh, we went to San Diego. That was amazing. Uh, thank you to everybody for coming out over there. I was in, I got real sick, man. I had a flu that hit me. I had a flu that hit me and, um, so, man, we were getting bag after bag after bag, just getting um, IVs and stuff in the back. And the lady that came to give the IV, she was kind of wild. She was cool, but she also, she would just, she'd throw anything in that bag, in the IV bag. That, that thing had damn, you know, it had vitamins. And then that bitch put damn, I think she put a thing of crystal light in there, the little, like, damn, we... I, I don't know if I can do crystal light to my veins, you know. She was putting everything in that bitch. You know, little every she put, you know, cup she put two out about two hours and twenty minutes of a five hour energy. She poured that bitch right into the bag. I like, damn, bro. You could hear my heart. It sounded like it hit a speed bump. Like, dang, bro. That shit, she was pouring anything in that bitch. And one of the shows I got out there, I couldn't even barely see out of my eyes. Man, my eyes weren't doing good. And my ears, I couldn't. All my senses were getting, I thought, you know, my senses were kind of getting phased out. Kind of like Elon Musk worked for my senses. And he's like, all right, we cutting two of these bitches off, baby. We cutting two of these bitches off. Um, what else? I hope you're doing something good for Thanksgiving. I'm going to head down to uh, Louisiana. Louisiana. Um, I'm hoping to get to see friends and family down there and, um, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, what else has been going on? San Diego was really amazing. You know, it was just, you know, I hadn't been out there in a while. And so just to get back on stage, um, one of the shows was, so, was, was pretty late. It started late and. So that was hectic, but thank you to everybody for all your patience. Um, the Thursday and Sunday shows were amazing. The weekend, I don't know. Oh, one night there was a, they had a security guard. Somebody was doing something. Some lady kept showing her tits, right? And I'm, you know, I want to see them. You know, call me whatever, you know, titty boy or something, but I want to see, you know. Hey, look at these tits. And she hit them tits, boy. I'm like, damn. And I knew right when she showed the tits, my tongue just came out and went like this. And I, it was just nothing to... Sh it was like a damn reaction. It was a reaction, bro. 
Like my tongue, yeah. Like my tongue was waving at them, just, just came out of my mouth. Like just, you know. And so, but she kept showing them. And I didn't, you know, they was decent. The first, You know, they, I was probably 40 yards from them. And I love a tit at more. I like a tit more at probably zero to a half yard. That's my favorite space for a tit. And then I like a tit a little further out, probably at about four yards out. But that's my favorite spacing where I like a tit. You know, probably zero to a half yard or about four yards out. And, uh, and then she kept shot and just saying, hey, you know, screaming. So we had to, we had to get her out of there. And then the security guard, I asked him and he acted like I didn't even exist. This guy, he had a mask on and he had like those fake, uh, contact lenses, you know, like the ones that are like, you know, it's almost like somebody looks like they work at like, uh, they put those contact lenses in. It's like they work at the, like, it's almost like Satan like knows somebody in their family and they've been recruited for Satan. Like Satan's recruiting and they've been reading the pamphlets at night at their house. You know what I'm talking about when they get those crazy eye things, they don't look real a little bit. Um, but anyway, I don't even know what I'm talking about now. Uh, so that was kind of wild. Um, but thank you to everybody for your support. Uh, where else do we go that was amazing? Well, we just got so many new spots coming up and, and, and we'll put up new places. People are like, are you coming to the England? You coming to uh, New Zealand? Yes. We'll come to all of them, but time has a way where it doesn't let you do it all at one time. You know, time is a, time is a single file line really. And, um, and I can only be in the line in one place at a time. So we'll get there, though, and I'm looking forward to it. And we'll get to everywhere. We're going to get to everywhere in America. We're going to do it all. You know, I want to come over there to um, St. George, Utah. My brother lives out over there. I want to get over there and be able to see him and do a show. We want to get up to Portland, NorCal, SoCal, Mexico, Mexico. Dude, I want to go to Mexico, and I want to damn bring some damn illegal aliens in or illegal immigrants or whatever you want to call it, Ille you know. Non-legals. I don't know what they call them now. Uh, but I def I want to meet a couple of them. Fuck. And even race them. I'll fucking race them bitches the last 100 yards. I bet I could beat somebody. I'd love to see who they got on their team. You know, it's never too early to play holiday music. I know that. Oh, I play that. Dude. I play it in January. I'm the, You know that I'm the guy who at, uh, if I'm doing karaoke, I sang, um... Rocking around the Christmas tree at the Christmas party hop. Because that's who I am. People are pissed at first, but then they know the words. And it's a short song. And they're not that pissed. Manscaped. If you don't want to piss people off, get them something from Manscaped. Do that little drummer boy a favor and use the lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. It is nice if you, chim if you trim your bird up. If you trim that peacock, boy, then you make sure he's feathered up. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. It has everything needed to help you deck the halls from face to balls. From the face to the balls. Just in time for mistletoe season. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash Theo. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com slash Theo. Manscaped. Get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. You know, there's a lot of hidden costs out there. Knock, knock, who's there? Hidden costs. The Michael Myers of financial agreements, baby. Hidden costs. That's why uh, credit consolidation from Lightstream can help you pay off your credit cards and lock in a low fixed interest rate. Rates start at 7.99% APR with auto pay and excellent credit. From Lightstream, you can get a loan from five thousand to one hundred thousand, and there are absolutely no fees. That's right. You can even get your money as soon as the day that you apply. So, if you have different loans here and there, and they're not consolidated, I certainly think it's a good idea to look into that. 
get the consolidation, know what percentages you're paying and make the best choice for yourself. You could go from paying $400 a month to 300. That's an extra 1200 a year. Just for our listeners, apply now to get a special interest rate discount and save even more. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash T-H-E-O. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash Theo. Subject to credit approval, rates range from 7.99% APR to 19.99% APR and include 0.50% auto pay discount. Lowest rates require excellent credit. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash T-H-E-O for more information. What else is happening? <clears throat> I went on a date. I went on a date. Uh, so that's cool. You know, I'm trying to be more, I've been more brave, like brave recently about trying to be, uh, just trying to take dating a little bit more seriously, a little, um, you know, uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time in the, in that space in my life, not being serious or not being able to be serious. So this will be a little bit different. You know, I went on a date and it was just simple, you know, but I felt like it was manageable and I just tried to be, just have a decent time, not try to put that pressure on it, you know, not try to put that boot, you know, that body pressure, that booty pressure, that smooch pressure, none of that. Just, hey, who are you? Who am I? Let's be right here. Let's tango right here. Let's let's play pickleball with these minutes and hours. Let's spend a little bit of time together. You know, your serve, my serve, your serve, my serve. You know, love, love, maybe, or maybe just game match and that's it and just go on. Um, what else? Um, I'm trying to think of what else has been happening in my life where I, where I, you know, things that I could share or, um, I'm seven months sober. So that's exciting. I know there's a lot of people out there that, uh, struggle. We get a lot of calls on the hotline and, um, try to return some of them when I can. Um, but I want you to know if you are trying to do something different in your life, um, that I can relate to you. That's, that's the thing that you and I probably have in common the most is that you are trying, I'm always trying to do something different in my life. And now that doesn't mean there's something always wrong with me. Um, but I do always want to have some kind of improvement, you know, uh, and I want to get my place self to a place where I can operate pretty comfortably. Um, and sometimes, you know, that can take some effort, really. So, but uh, if that's anything like you, then I bet we really have that in common. Um, what else? I'm trying to think of what else happened. Oh, well, I don't know if I talked about it. You know, Caleb Presley faked his own death on me. And and he, he, well, he almost died. And so at least, you know, he's willing to put his muerto where his mouth is, you know. So that, at least I respected that. But what happened was he was in the hot, he, something happened to him. I don't know what happened to him. He had a, you know. He could have had some bad salad. I don't know. Maybe he, you know, he lost too many bets on bar. You know, he, I don't know what happened to him. But he, I think he, you know, he lost probably a couple hundred bucks on North Carolina. And next thing you know, he's in the hospital. He's on a ventilator. And so I'm on an airplane. I'm flying on an airplane somewhere. And, uh, and I get a damn... Um, I get a a, a message from Will Compton. If you're not familiar with Will Compton, he 
Um, he is a member of Bussin' with the Boys, and they are a they're kind of a um, avant garde or whatever it's called. I think, or one of them is an avant garde. Taylor, there's two of them. Will and Taylor are the two men that are on it. And Will, yeah, Will is like a Taylor is like an avant garde. He's like a football tackle, and he he also looks like he would be like the like one of the final bosses at like kind of like a Renaissance fair, but like with a little bit of a Pac Sun vibe thrown in, right? And then Will is kind of like, he's like this, he only, he's like a crash chest dummy for CTE, kind of. He's like, basically, he's that dog, you know? They're both dogs. They're both dogs. But Will um, told, Will texted me, I'm on this airplane, and he said, did you hear what happened to Caleb? And when somebody says that, you're like, <clears throat> it's two options. Either Caleb is unalive or or whoever the person is that person is either unalive or they won the lottery or something right so i'm like i don't think caleb even plays the powerball or nothing so i'm like what happened you know he makes you do the what happened like gee and i'm on a plane so it's like it takes four minutes i have to restart my phone get it back on the thing and it said that he passed away So I'm sitting in the plane, man. I start just breaking down, you know. Um, I'm just, you know, <clears throat> I'm shook. And I even told the guy next to me, you know, I mean, he could see something was kind of wrong. And I looked over and I said, um, my friend just passed away. And he goes, do you want to go pee? That's what he said. And I'm like, what kind of sick dude does this guy think I am that if somebody dies that I got to go hold my dick for some reason? Or, you know, like, I, he didn't know. There was no condolences or nothing. You know, and that kind of, that shook me, man. Like, my friend passed away and he's like, oh, do you want to, you, you want to go pee? You think because... Like, what, what about looking at me makes you think, because my friend is gone, that I want to pee, that I want to go hold my wiener in a small room and have water come out of it, you know? Yeah, I mean, we're just losing touch with each other, man. But yeah, for about 20, 25 minutes, um, I thought he was deceased. And, uh, and then I get a text from Will. And... Um, and he said, hey, man, uh, we're just joking or whatever. We just had burritos or something like that. You know, some just typical, you know, just real sig app, just some real sig app shit or whatever, you know. But anyway, <clears throat> shit, we haven't even gotten it. I've just been rambling. Guys, um, we had some great voicemails that came in. You know, it's just I feel I feel I, I want to say I, 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 um. I'll do, I, I want to do more solo episodes. I want to be able to keep the, our connection. Uh, sometimes it's been, I've been just managing like what's he, what is most capable for me. And so, um, so if you wonder like, man, Theo doesn't do it this week. It's not that I don't care. It's just, that's um, what I can like handle for myself. So I have to make sure I take care of, uh, of myself. You know, I've been caught up for years. I got caught up trying to do everything and um man and it really really burned me out it burned my dick open so now i'm just managing things a little i'm managing myself you know because i want to be able to be alive um and and i'm excited next year we're gonna add up we're gonna add back in some elements of trying to do some positive things for people um we we're we're just we're getting things back on track here and um and that's awesome that's awesome uh some great some great calls came in let me get to them here 
Was there any news? Let me see. There is a light. I like that. <clears throat> Musk restores Trump's Twitter account after online poll. You know what's funny about Elon Musk? People forget his last name is Musk. Because Musk is just that damn, that's your damn, what is it? Let me look it up. M-U-S-K. Musk. Damn. And it, it's funny, now you put Musk, the definite, if you put Musk, he comes up. But when I was growing up, Musk, it was just uh, a strong smelling reddish brown substance, which is secreted by the male musk deer for scent marking and is an important ingredient in perfumery. <clears throat> so musk is just that body bust, you know? It's that damn, it's just when your damn pores all kind of fart just in sheer just, this is who I am, baby. It's that, you know, it's the uh, license and, and registration of your fucking soul, baby. You know, it's your, it's your, just your essence, just fucking busting a damn air nut into people's nostrils, baby. That's what musk is. You got that musk, baby. Damn. That musk, boy, that's why you see a dog got to go get a hit of another dog or another animal's ass, bro. They want that, you know, that's that damn business card, baby. That's the devil's business card, baby, your asshole. And that's why you see a dog go over there and just try to get another dog's number real quick. He just, you know, just gets that hit. You get all the information at once, you know. It's like Larry, plumber. 601 446 you know it's like damn that's it baby that's mother nature's qr code baby that that b-hole you get that information people hit you with that you pull that intel off somebody's backside off that b-hole there is a light it's shining for me one day off of vaping baby I am right now one full day off of vaping, and I'm going to try to keep going. My God, is it hard. But yeah, Elon beat out damn deer, uh, deer bust. So it's interesting. When you know, another case of humans just out, uh, just defeating nature in the sense that what we think is important. You know, musk used to be the damn scent of the animal. And now it's some fucking dude that's afraid of the sun. But I do love seeing him make people at Twitter squirm. I like anybody, but get the squirm on them. Twitter has been Twitter. Nothing. I I, I feel. I mean, the internet, so cell phones have ki are killing us. Uh, Twitter. Nothing has been worse than Twitter. It's trash. It's trash, man. And it's not open. It's not open source. You can't just say what it's like. You can say, you can say, you can say, you can't say it. Just even it out, baby. Make it a royal rumble. That's all I'm saying. Make it. Make it either these are the rules or these aren't the rules. But some people shouldn't get the rules, and other people not get the rules. Because then those aren't rules. Those are damn cages. What else do we got? <clears throat> oh, Buffalo got hit with this blizzard, baby. I don't know if you've seen this. And if you're in recovery, baby, there's nothing like seeing a damn blizzard hit a bunch of people. My God. There's nothing like seeing that when the skies open up and serve that, that 30 ball to the world. Hit that, two, that, that 200 ball. You got a damn ha uh, half of the suburbs just damn hopped up on a on a two thousand ball on a on a four, on a four on a six sixty seventy ball. You got eighty ball in the damn driveway. You're out there. I loved it, man. Dawson Knox was sending me pictures. AJ Klein was sending me pictures. God, I was. I I don't think that the players um, and the people of Buffalo know. Just the damn, just, I mean, just that temperature porn. That's what I was on. God. I see a driveway. I see a shovel. Woo-woo. 
I'm musking, baby. I can feel my damn my chest just go from a damn lowercase a cup to a fucking to to almost a half a. Just I could feel myself just half a and in my chest. I think that we were all hopped up when but when Buffalo shared those snow pictures. God, we were all there. Now I was in the comfort of my warm home, you know. But I swear to God, I went and made me some damn hot chocolate in honor and in, in honor of those good folks. Um, you gotta love the Bills. It's exciting, and I'll tell you why it's exciting because those fans are that 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 that's fanhood. That's where you out there. You take your family to the game. You damn lose a family member. Everybody in that bitch is, you know, the inside of the stadium looks like home alone on a Tuesday because they got 90 kids and people, adults, McAllisters, everybody's stuck in that bitch. People just hitting each other in the face with damn uh, shaving cream lotion and running around and putting thumbtacks on the stairs. People damn home alone and up in that, but that's how the bills go. What is it, Ralph Waldo, whatever it is, Ralph Emerson Stadium. You'd be out there, damn, so you get a text from work, you're a boss, so damn, I'm stuck in Ralph Emerson Stadium. I've been in that bitch, you know, I've been in this bitch since we beat the Ravens, since we beat Edgar Allan Poe, you know. But, damn, I was loving that. That made my, that really made, that, that was a nice time for the weekend, Oh, I went to UFC 281. Sorry, I just feel like I'm just bragging now, kind of. Yeah, I, I, I just feel like I'm bragging. Um, but, dude, that was so much fun. Man, when I go into the UFC things, man, for me, I really, it's like, sleigh bells ring while you're listening. Children's link, children's slings. Um, children's slings. Uh, I don't know the rest of it, but it's like I think it's about like, like a bunch of kids broke their arms or whatever. You know what song I'm talking about? Um, God, it's just good. You know, it just man when I'm in there, it's like every fighter that I see is like one of the reindeer, and like Dana White is like Santa, and it just. Everything about it's just like, and then the music starts, and then the fighters come out, and they're all warriors. You know, they're all so. It's like you, y'all are doing something so many of us can't couldn't do. Um, yeah, there's just so much about it. And I was sitting there watching. It was uh, Dave Portnoy's and his buddy Big Cat. And they were, I mean, they were cheering for Molly McCann's, baby. And she, I mean, this lady had Molly McCann's in a damn crucifix. I mean, I don't know if you saw the Molly McCann's fight. And they had her in a damn cruise. I mean, this, uh, who did she fight? Molly McCann's. And she's British. She's a uh, Skyza. And, you know, I like she got that rough and tumble, baby. You know what I'm saying? She got that girl in her. She got to look like her vagina would arm wrestle you a little. You know, she's got that, or thumb wrestle at least, baby. She's got that gumption. She's, uh, she's a warrior. You know, and she fought, um, she fought and she didn't get the win. And the girl she fought, Archibald, who was the lady she fought? I think Aaron Archibald. Aaron Blanche, Blanchefield. And it was just a, I mean, I'd love to see that fight again. It was, a, it was amazing. But I mean, she had McCann, she had her in this, in the crucifix, you know, she had her damn, I mean, she had her in the damn third Testament to be honest with She really had her, you know, but Molly did not. I mean, she was like, gosh, she was like one of those door to door salesmen. That's just like, I mean, she kept, I mean, knock, 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 knock. She just would, I mean, she, oh. It's powerful. When you're sitting there watching women do that and you know you couldn't even do it. Dude, I'd have tapped, bro. I'd have tapped. Man, if I have to sneeze into my hand real hard and there's no Kleenex, bro, I'll tap. I've tapped out of a hard sneeze, dude. Just because of the pressure sometimes it puts on my neck. <laughs> you know, damn, you get a little bit of light whiplash and I'm out, baby. 
I just lost to sinuses. Um, but that was great to be at the fights. It was just, I mean, it just was magical. And people were bummed when Adesanya lost. But also, you know, it's all like the, you know, it's just the story of how things go. Um, and then Poirier and Chandler, you know, I, I like both of these. They're both, they're both totally different guys. Um, but both just great guys. I don't think anybody wanted to see them fight each other except them. Um, but that was an unbelievable fight. In the first round, I was like, who's everybody? Like, I felt like we all, everybody won, everybody, it just like was, them thing, everybody was unkind. It was just, I felt like people were unkind. I felt like it, there was a minute where they were both unconscious, but also fighting. So just, just wild, man. And then the ring girls, man, were there. Dang. Every time they come around the ring, I'm like, all right. Uh, yes, I do. I do. Dearly beloved, that's all I hear. Every time they go walking by, we are gathered here. I do. Yes. Oh, I would be honored. That's what I, I just, that's how I feel when they go by. Um, yeah, this was some of the stuff from the Buffalo Bills blizzard. This stuff was great, man. Uh, and this blizzard, I mean, this looks like. Wow, if you can see this, I mean, it looks like Columbia took a vacation. Yeah. So fun. People just diving into people disappearing. A lot of people are probably going to, I don't want to say, I'm sure a Dateline episode will start from this. A lot of people getting rid of their wives or whatever. Or a lot of lesbianism starts also in cold weather. You know that? Go talk to a lesbian. They'll tell you. That's a cold weather sport, huh? Let me get you out of that coat, huh? And, and let me get you into a little bit of a little bit of this non wiener. That's what they're that's how it starts right there. That's a gateway drug for lesbianism. Chinese man runs a marathon while chain smoking. Yeah. Yeah. Chinese people, they do everything while chain smoking. I don't know if you've been to China or not, or if you've been this where they build everything. Dude, you get you pick up anything now in a store, you smell it. You can smell a little bit of chain smoking in it. It doesn't matter what it is. You get in, you get you a little uh, thing of uh a little thing of um shirts or undershorts, Hanes undershorts. You smell it's like, damn, somebody been smoking in these bitches. Or you get you a lampshade, that bitch already got smoke in it. Damn, this thing got half a Winston built into the fabric. But that's China. They blowing smoke in everything. Everything, our silverware, everything probably has uh, carcinogens in it. Um, what else do we have? Construction worker destroys business after they don't pay them. Hell yeah. I like that. Let's see what happened. This dude. Oh, yeah. He didn't get paid, baby. He's taking the work back. I love it. I love this. Dang, he's eating the walls with that little, uh, that little motor hammer, whatever that thing is. That little, uh, T-Rex. That thing looks like a damn T-Rex, but it's a, just a machine. Damn, that thing will fuck, huh? That thing's beautiful. Um, but yeah, this guy, you can't see the video. He's brought a little, um, shoveler. It's like a little motorized shoveler. Have like a big shovel and he drives it and he's just basically attacking the walls in this building. I love this and I'll tell you why. Because this is where we're at, man. This is where we're at. If you got insurance, you're covered and somebody gets you down like that, they don't do, you get a, do what you got to do, baby. And this is one thing that I miss about, and honestly, I miss a little about uh, being young, being completely broke, having nothing. Because when you got nothing, they can't, they can't take nothing from you. 
That's when you're the freest you could ever be. They go on, you free as could be, you got nothing, then they can't take nothing from you. You could say, do what you ain't got. No, because you know what happens is, you if you have something, they say something, people sue you. They come out, they trick you. They trick everybody. They'll find a way. So then you're like, dang, I want to say something, but I like this having this new, this sofa. You know, I want to say something, but I got a damn microwave over there. I got a damn lava lamp. I got a damn microwave that work, that runs in conjunction with my lava lamp. I'm making a damn TV dinner and I got a bunch of a little some goop over here doing a damn Dougie in a in, in the in the in the lamp. You know? So I don't know what I'm talking about, but but that's the time, baby. Fuck you got nothing. Get out there because let them, you know who's not, they're not gonna sue you if you got nothing. They ain't gonna sue you because you ain't there ain't nothing. So you the winner. This is a lawsuit universe now. It's insurance nation, baby. A teen solo hiker who was terrorized for days by unknown figures dressed in white. Two cops who quit their job at a local theater because of unexplained encounters with an alleged demon. An isolated forest in Canada where people keep turning up headless. These are just some of the strange, dark, and mysterious stories you'll hear each week on the Mr. Ballin podcast. In each episode, Mr. Ballin shares real-life haunting accounts, like the case of Haley Zega, who disappeared from a hiking trail for 51 hours. <clears throat> That's right. If you like the mystery and intrigue, you want to know what could be going on, Mr. Ballin could have it for you. Hey, Prime members, listen to the Amazon Music exclusive podcast, Mr. Ballin Podcast, Strange, Dark, and Mysterious Stories in the Amazon Music app. Download the app today. All right, let's get into some voicemails, man. You guys have uh, been so patient, and I'm sorry, this I thought this would be a shorter episode because I just wanted to do Happy Holidays. Um, but here we go. Uh Let's take a call right here. Hi, Theo. Uh, my name's Megan. I'm from California, Los Angeles area. Um, I'm hey, Megan. Fan. Hey, Megan. Onward. Um, I'm a new fan, probably like the last six months, but I've been watching a bunch of your podcasts and different interviews you've been on with Bobby Lee. I love Bobby Lee, too. Um, I'm a single mom and I've been dating a little bit and I just wanted to let you know that good for you, baby, to get out there, you know, get out there. We all have to get out there. This is our time. You know, I, I, I used to, uh, so much of my life when I look at the past of my life, I was afraid to get out there because I don't look the way I want to look. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not in my best shape right now. I'm not. But then, damn, as life goes on, it's, it, all, it all just gets a little tougher. And you never get to the space, the perfect space. So the whole time, I'm keeping myself away from joy, away from possibility. Because I just, uh, out of fear a lot of times, or insecurity, I did that a lot. I'm not accusing you of that. It just, man, when I look at pictures of myself, even a few years ago, I say, damn, man. man I wish you'd have more confidence then. You know, I wish you went and did the, you know, but that's okay um, because I, I can try now. Um, but I'm glad you're getting out there, ma'am. Let's hear more. I was doing okay dating before. Like, I think I'm attractive. I'm not gross. Um, but once I told guys, like, oh, yeah, I like Theo Vaughn, I've been getting so much more dick before than before. Um, guys just love it. I mean, what? Um, hey, we giving back to these single moms, boys. Look, I'm glad it sounds like you've been getting safely poked out there. You know, hopefully you don't look like MGK's, uh, VMA's outfit. Um, but. 
Um, that's good for you. I'm glad you're getting some decent wiener out there on behalf of the community, baby. And that's what we do out there. We serve semi-decent to decent wiener. You know, if you want something outside of that, you're going to have to go elsewhere. But that's what we serve. Praise God, baby. I'm happy you're doing well. And you stay busy out there and get that wand, mama. Get you a little bit of that Thanksgiving wand, huh? Get a little bit of a little bit of root meat with your turkey, huh? What else we got? A couple other calls have came in. Uh, um, here we got one right here. What's up, Theo? So I just had a question. So oh, right. I just found out like a couple months ago that like my dad isn't like my actual dad, and my mom has just been like straight up lying for like eighteen years to my face. And, like, I found it out because I was getting documents for, like, college. And it was, like, this, like, medical shit. And, like, I checked the name. And on my dad's name, it was, like, different. And so I got on my mom. And I'm like, yo, like, why is it different? She goes, oh, it must be, like, a typo. Or, like, they messed it up or some shit. And I was like, oh, all right then. And then so my friend called me, like, a week later. And he goes, yeah, bro, your mom got drunk and told my mom that you're not your dad's son. And I was like, yo, what the fuck? And so, like, I go on a trip. Whoa. So, hold, dude, I feel like the clues are adding up kind of a little. I'm sorry to hear this, that you're not the dad's son. You are not the son. You are not the son. Ugh. The dad's like, um, but, bro, you are you at the beach or something? Because you're like... Bro, my dad, you know, he didn't know. And I told my mom, she's like, what? And then I feel like I'm talking to Chad and JT. This could be a Chad and JT prank. Um, but I'm a ride. I'm a ride. Let's hear more. And I'm sorry. I, I'm, well, I don't, I can't tell how this is affecting you yet. It's like my cousins and shit. And I'm, I open up to them. I'm like, yo, I don't think my dad is my real dad. And they go, yeah, we know that. We then knew that. And like everyone in my whole life knew. Bro. Are you sure you didn't? Are you sure? It sounds like you should have known. I hate to say that. But it sounds like everybody you're like, hey, this isn't my real dad. And people are like, no shit. Carl or whatever, you know, or Richard. Let me hear the beginning name. Sorry. What's up, Theo? So I just had a question. So, oh, you didn't have a name. Yeah. What? Oh, no. I mean, was there moments where you were like, where you got like a Christmas present from him and it was like, um, to my son, love, dad, question mark? Like, did anything like that ever happen? Or were you ever in the house and you were like, dad? And he was like, not it. Like, did, did you did you hear any memories? Because it just sounds, you're like, Mom, it's not our real dad. And she's like, oh, I don't know, Bob. Might be a typo. I mean, is Ed, are you guys eating weed or something? Let's hear more. And, like, everyone in my whole life knew. Everyone knew. And no one told me. My mom had been straight up lying to me. And I just didn't talk to her for days. And I'm just like. For days, bro. This whole thing. I think this is Chad and JT. And if it is, dude. Uh, you That's pretty good. Man, we didn't, you know. My mom was like, this is your dad, man. And I was like. Oh, hey, 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 hey. If it's not, brother, if this is not a prank, then I am I am sorry. I'm sorry. But also, you got a new adventure, baby. You out there. You know? You got the, you're that fucking Sherlock homie, bro. You out there. You could go fucking get you a new dad. Find that new, you know, that new. And this dad could be a, you know, you got a chance to really. It's almost like I'll trade what's, the, what's here. But, you know, it's like, let's make a deal. All right, Ron or whatever. I'll give you, you know. I'll give you, you know, uh, Alan or whatever the dad's name is, and I'll take a chance for what's behind door number seven or whatever. So good luck out there, bro. A lot of us, you know, you get the dad you get, and you don't get that second opportunity. So this could be God really doing something powerful for you. And I think you got to pay attention too, bro. It sounds like 
people been trying to tell you it was on your birth certificate your cousins all knew people were shocked when you didn't know i think you got to drop in dude and look at just some baby pictures and stuff and see who the man is that's next to your mom and i think it's gonna blow your mind dude praise brother let's hear another call that came in here um here we go hey to you my name is noah uh, i'm just basically calling to let you know that uh a lot of what you say is pretty much exactly how i feel man uh when you talk about being addicted to your emotions i, I completely understand that i feel the exact same way now, i'm in recovery also and i'm 57 days sober today and uh my man congratulations bro 57 days how how wild is that you know you know how no you know how few people in the world have ever done anything for 57 days especially giving up something we liked dude you it's hard it's it's i'm one day off vaping right now bro and i want to fucking smoke a bowl out of my own nuts bro of pure nicotine so it's really magical, man, to see you have in this these fifty seven days, man. Onward. This shit just gets overwhelming sometimes, man. You know, I thought getting sober would solve most of my problems, but I guess life's a little bit more complicated than that. You know, I've always carried around this anger with me that I can't really put my finger on. You know, like, you know just the littlest things will set me off, like dropping something or bumping into something. I'll, I'll be screaming in my head for for hours. Oh, man, I can really relate to that. If there's an inanimate object, I can tell how I'm doing right in the morning. I bump into something on the way out of my room. And I used to be, man, I'd be so angry. Fog is motherfucker. It's piece of shit. Yeah. I'll burn you. I will burn you. I will put you in a fireplace. You know, I would just yell that at, p at pieces of furniture. But now, you know what I noticed the other day? I'm able. Sometimes I'll go. <laughs> I'm able to laugh because I don't see that the fact that I bumped into something, I don't see it as any reflection of who I am. Or any reflection that the world is trying to get me. Or the world is angry at me. And I only say that just to say that uh, there, it, it can, those feelings of anger you still have, it can adjust. Uh, let's hear more. You know, I like to say that if, if someone else spoke to me the way that I speak to myself, you know, I'd have to kill that son of a bitch because, you know, I couldn't tolerate that. I don't know why we're just so mean to ourselves, man. You know, I get, I don't know why I get so addicted to things, you know. I'm, I'm even addicted to damn nasal spray. You know, that's mm -hmm. about the hardest thing I've had to kick to be honest with you. <laughs> um, man, I appreciate your honesty here. Uh yeah, look, I had a non-addictive, I had a non-addictive nasal spray that I had for a while that, um, I, sometimes I'd pull up, if I was going to a bar or something, I'd do a hit in each nose before I go in. It didn't even do anything to me. It gave me a little bit of a flashback of probably doing a drug or something, you know, and just kind of heighten my senses in a, in, a, in a weird way or, um, but yeah, man, I, I'm sorry that you are so mean to yourself. You know, and I don't mean that as a reflection of who uh, you are, because I know, like me, you don't want to be. You know, you don't want to be. Um, but if you're like us, you have some of this that we have, this ism, this alcoholism, this, this uncomfort. It's really an uncomfort that just lives in us. Um. Yeah, you you probably gonna be real hard on yourself. You know, I think I was always re extremely hard on people. That's the number one note people have given me. Man, you're so hard on yourself. And I think I used to think that if I wasn't hard on myself. Then nobody was, let me think about this. If I wasn't hard on myself, 
Because when I was young, nobody was anything on me, you know? And so I realized, I thought maybe if I was hard on myself or maybe if I was perfect. You know, I used to think, I realized this the other day. I used to think that, uh, well, I expected myself to be perfect. So then I would never was because it's impossible. So then, therefore, I'm so hard on myself, you know? Because I thought that I, I, I wasn't cared for as a child, and I'm not trying to self-pity. I'm just looking at what was a part of my life that I wasn't cared for as a child. So therefore, I took it on myself. Oh, if I was better, if I was perfect, then I would be loved. You know, I'm not perfect enough. I'm not good enough. You know, I'm not good enough for my mother to see me. I'm not good enough. Um for my father to stay alive, I had this epiphany not long ago that I thought that if I was better, if I was perfect, if I did everything right as a kid, I thought this. I didn't know until just recently that I thought it, but it came up that if I did everything right, that my father would stay alive. That's what I thought for some reason as a kid. I you know, nobody explained to me what was going on or how things worked or that dad was getting, you know, I just knew my dad was older and that he was not going to be alive for a long time. And as a child, I thought maybe if I'm perfect, if I'm perfect, you know, that my life would be different, you know, and more specifically that my dad would stay alive. I thought that. I don't know how I came up with that or what made me think that as a kid. But at least then it gave me some control over what ha or what was going to happen. Because now it's some of it's something it's up to me, you know, even though it's not realistic, it's impossible for that to come to fruition, but it's up to me then. So that's why I think I was so hard on myself a lot of times, I think, because then at least it, it puts it on me. which was the only thing that I felt I could try and rely on anyway um, because I didn't feel comfortable in the world. Um, and that's not some down. I'm not trying to down or anybody, uh, but I thought about that. Let's hear more, brother. Thanks for the call. Yeah, there's enough bitches for me, man. I just wanted to <laughs> tell you thanks and that you wanted to learn, man. You know, there's a ton of days where your podcast was the only time I smiled that day. So keep doing the Lord's work, man. Take care of yourself. Gang. Thanks, bro. You too, man. You know, I'm proud of you, dude. It's hard. Uh, you know. Um, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you because I know how hard it is to take care of ourselves. You know, I know how hard it is to take care of ourselves. I know that... Um, for me, uh, I never wanted to take care of myself because if I took care of myself, then uh, then I was doing somebody else's job. Instead, I wanted to show, I just always wanted to show you how much I was hurting, you know? Um, and so starting to take care of myself was doing the opposite of that. And it was the opposite of the whole thing that I had like, oh, you're going to see, when you look at me, you're going to see how much I hurt, you know? Um, and starting to take care of myself is a total opposite of that. So, uh, I hear that in you today and I'm, I'm thankful for that, man. I really am. And I'm grateful that I have moments like this. These are moments that mean something to me, you know, two guys being, trying to be honest and not even being gay and just being honest. Um, because these are moments I never had as a child. I never had, there was never any peace in my house. There was never a chance for anybody even to listen or to be heard. There was never even any piece of space to think or to feel. There was no space for that. And uh, and so it's moments like this, you know, I, where I can have an honest conversation with somebody. I, I'd have given anything, if, you know, to have these as a child. And children need these sort of things. Um, so anyway, bro, yeah, enough fucking, enough of that shit for me too, bro. But praise, man. I'm happy for you. And uh, happy Thanksgiving, man. You made my day. You really did, brother. Praise God. Uh, let's hear what else we got, man. Um, 
And don't get don't give up, dog. Stay in there. 57 man, stay in there, baby. Uh let me see. Here we go. Hey Dio. What's up, man? This is Robert calling out of Fort Worth. What's up, Robert? Out of Fort Worth, baby. I love Texas. It's a good place and um that's great, man. Fort Worth. I've been down there. I used to go down there to Randy Butler's comedy room, one of my favorite comedy rooms they used to have down there. Can't remember the name of it offhand. But um God, he had probably the best I mean, he he might have had the best comedy room in the country when they used to have it. It was underground over there in Fort Worth. And you could get your little comedy down there and get your little liquor and even get your little leg or a little titty sometime afterwards out there. Meet you some Marty. Praise God, brother onward. Uh big fan. Uh anyways. Well, I have a question, man, and I know you have a lot of comedy stuff, a lot of funny stuff, which I watch for, but I have, like, a serious question. Okay, so here it is. So me and my fiance, we've been together for about six months, seven months, and, uh, well, she has some court dates coming up, and she's facing some time. She's facing about eight years. Now, I don't know if I should, I mean, I really don't know what I should do. Should I, should I break it off before she goes, or should I? wait for her for eight years or, or what should I do, man? I mean, I really, really love her. She's a really good woman mm -hmm. and uh, we have a lot of good times together, man. But, you know, I'm a man and not only because I have needs because it's not even about that. It's just about the, you know, I mean, that's a long time to wait. I mean, she might not do a full eight, but she'll probably do, I don't know, maybe two, three, four, five years. Bang, baby. Gang, baby. Crime, you know, and this is, this is a crime call. You know, and this is where hopefully she got with Morgan and Morgan over there. They do good attorney work. I don't know who she got getting her the years or getting out of them or whatever. But um, uh, I'll say this, man. First of all, how the times have changed. This is a call you would hear during World War, World War One, World War Two, World War Three, when people. When wives, their husband going off to military or they're in a POW camp, what do I do? They call in, you know, on the ring phone in the, D, you know, what do I do? Do I wait for Andy? Do I wait for Ricardo? I mean, look, it depends on what type of life you want to lead. There's something beautiful about waiting for someone. There's something romantic about it. There's something really perfect about because you get to keep them in this space in your head where they're perfect. They can't really do any wrong because they don't have to. It's almost sometimes waiting for somebody can be a sense of control. I'm going to wait for you. But really what I'm doing, not all the time, but really what I'm doing is I'm going to say I'm going to keep this in a perfect place where it's manageable because I don't really have to interact with it. It's almost like something I can just keep on the shelf right here. I can communicate with it when I need to. I can get what I need from it. In some ways, I have somebody to care about, but I don't physically have to have them there. I'm not saying you're doing that. I'm saying I've done that in my life in relationships. Um, but damn, dude. But then also, you're going to have to do them conjugal visits or whatever. Or you're going to have to sneak over there at night and just Andy Dufresne your wiener through that chain link fence. And let... Uh, your girl, let Molly or whatever her name is over there, not, you know, not be off over there for the spotlight hits you. Because I can't ejaculate under a sheer spotlight. Anything over probably 120 watts, buddy, I can't come, you know. And that's who I am. But if there's a strong, if a, you know, if I'm getting an HJ and a boat pulls up or something, you know, or, uh, or if damn two, even two coal miners walk up while I'm getting a handy, bro. I can't, I can't eat jack around more than probably about 120 watts of straight light. So, but that's me, you know, that's me. And I think it's brave. Now then how far do you want to go? Do you want to make her stuff and mail her things? Do you want to have an apron also? Cause I'm sure there's a whole club of men. Men who love prison women. Let me look it up. Men who love prison women. Couldn't, oh. Mm. 
Let me see. Husbands of imprisoned women. They killed their husbands now in prison. That's not you, man, because you're calling in. Um, I don't know. I'd get it. You know, you. I'm sure you could get some information about this. Uh, but look, I think it's admirable of you. You know, men used to go off to war and the women would wait for them. You know, and I think if you're baby birds over there in prison, you know, and you you can keep your seed in the feeder, then yeah, you can wait till she gets out, you know? And then also you may be able to set up a situation with her where you say, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna date. I love you. And this is, I'm gonna date you while you're there. So then at least you also can be honest with her in case you wanna date outside of there or you give yourself the opportunity to still fall in love, you know? Um, because then you don't want to have a thing I don't think where you're cheating and having a lie about it. That's the, that's when you're skating on dirty ice, baby. But praise, brother. I hope you, uh, you know, I think it's really kind of you to even think about that. And I think it shows some awareness for who you are as a person. And I think as long as you're honest with her about what you're thinking, bro, that's really going to be nice, you know. And so bless you, man, and good luck over there. Um... Let me see. Let's see here what else we got. Hey, g'day, Theo. It's Andrew here from Brisbane. How are you going? Um, hey, Andrew from Brisbane. How are you going, mister? I've always wanted to call in with something funny, you know, like like the rest of them or something interesting. But I was listening to your podcast and you're saying you don't have to call in with something interesting. Um, you can just call up with, you know, what you do for a living. So... I'm a milkman. I deliver milk around Brisbane. I uh, start work at around 2 o'clock in the morning. Thank you for calling, Andrew. Um, any milkman that's working at 2 a.m., bruh, I'm, you know what I'm saying? We both know what you're doing, baby. You know? You, sit, you out there slinging that body milk, son. That fucking blue percent. You know what I'm talking about, dude. You out there balling out in people's gardens. Let's hear more. And I finish around 11 o'clock, so I've got the whole day to be at home. And, um, you know, I love it. And also, I guess that's probably why That's probably why they blame the milkman, because, you know, I'm at home all afternoon while the rest of the blokes are at work, working hard. So uh, big ups, big love, Theo. Love your show. Praise, brother. Thank you for calling Australia. I didn't even know you. I mean, I guess, yeah. I never even thought about y'all having milk over there. But I guess it makes sense y'all would have milk. Um, but damn, if let me tell you, bro, if you rolling up at somebody's house with a couple of jugs, baby, at 2 a.m., dude, that's, you a pervert, bro. You a pervert, man. And I, you know, I think this is God talking through me right now. I mean, damn, like, fuck, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm being too mean to you, but I just, maybe, I don't know, maybe there's something nice about it. You out there just damn fucking leaving people a little bit of yogurt, bro. You out there girting on people, girting in the, you know, just right, you know, leave a little canister of girt by the door. You out there girting for mom, girting for dad or whatever. I mean, damn, I don't know. I remember the first time I ever even had a little bit of yogurt, bro. I thought, damn, somebody's gay, bro. You know, not me, but whoever's making it or whatever. Somewhere along the chain of command, somebody's gayed out or something on this. Because how else they even doing this? Putting all of, you know, it was um, strawberry. So, but good luck over there, bro. Stay alive. God bless you, Australia. I cannot wait to come there. I'm looking to make a trip uh, next, I believe, Thanksgiving to, before Christmas to have like a time over there in Aus to do a few weeks and do some shows, maybe sooner, but I want to come, I think, in the summer, I guess. I don't know. What's the best time to come? Let me know. Um, as well, we're looking to hire uh, somebody who works in videography, clips, uh, making good social clips and that sort of thing. Um, you can send a DM to the uh, uh, this past weekend producer um, Instagram account. That's the way to do that. Let's get one more call here. What do we have? 
What's good, bro? Marco over here in Las Vegas. Hey, I'm a new new podcast fan. I've seen specials and all, but I didn't know you had a podcast. Well, I'm sure you did, but I just never looked it up. And, uh, you know, I've been binge watching, you know, it's October, all the way back in February, and I was listening to one where you talk about, like, your feelings and your mom, and, you know, I just want to ask how you doing with that. Like, how you feeling? How's, how's life been treating you? How's your relationship? You know, how's, uh, I know the ayahuasca helps you out, helps see some things, feel some things. Um, but you know, I just want to see how you're feeling, man. I really appreciate the podcast. I appreciate everything you do. Um, the way you talk to us, you know, even though you're not really talking to us, but I feel like you're talking to us, you know, praise God, gang, gang. Gang, baby, thank you. Thank you for the question, man. Uh, this kind of stuff, yeah. You know, I, I love thinking about that, this type of thing. And, um, yeah, the ayahuasca was very helpful. It was tough going through all that. I mean, it's, it's a grueling thing. It's just until you've gone through it and really done it is, I mean, it's, it's a lot on your body. It's basically, it's a damn, I mean, you, it's, you're out there and, uh, you know, it's like buds for your emotions. You know, you're doing a lot. Um, yeah, I'm still kind of getting uh, a little bit more clarity on some of it, but it's amazing how over time it gets clearer and how over time it still uh, helps me. Um, I'm so grateful for that experience. I'm, um, you know... Yeah, I didn't get what I needed as a kid. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And, you know, I realize I've had a tough time growing up in my life. I'm a late bloomer. And that's okay. I had a really tough time growing up in my life. Um, You know, and when I was young, when I was a kid, you know, my dad wasn't around my, uh, and my dad was very old and my mother worked and my mother had sort of an emotional condition where she couldn't, um, she didn't look at me a lot and she didn't, uh, um, she didn't come, like come to me if I, if I was hurt, if I was like physically hurt then she would react. But if I was just like had some emotional pain or she, my mother wouldn't come to me. She had a tough time putting her hands on me. Um, so that was just how things were. Right. I, you know, that was, that's, that's okay. Um, it's not okay, but that's was life. Um, but I realized as an adult, uh, that I never wanted to grow up. I never wanted to grow up. I was a late bloomer and I didn't want to grow up. And I, I realized why. Because I still wanted to be that kid. Because if I grow up, I still wanted to be that kid. I still wanted my mother to come around. My, You know, I still was waiting on these things that I didn't get as a child. And I was waiting in every sense I could. I was, I was trying to stay as young as I could and be, and because once I evolve, once I become an adult, that kid doesn't even exist anymore and he doesn't exist anyway, but I, there's something inside of me. It's like, if I can just, if I can just not grow up, then I'll be able to still be this kid. And I'll, I'll and whenever the things come in that I needed, I'll be here to get them. But that was never going to happen. And at a certain point, me just, just staying a child forever was, uh, it was just robbing me of becoming an adult. Um, and man, it's really hard to let go. Uh, it's really hard to let go and grow up. Because I'm the last, because once I do that, there's no, that kid doesn't even, you know, he's not even there anymore. I mean, he's still there deep inside of me, but he's not like there waiting, you know. Um, and I'm not saying this. I don't need any self-pity. I'm okay with this. I have some feelings around it. You know, it's a little bit emotional for me to think about. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's there's more in it. And I'll think about some more of it and talk about it more in the future. Um, but... But yeah, if I didn't have that ayahuasca, I would never have gotten that understanding. 
I would have never gotten under the understanding that uh, I'm still waiting. There's so much of me that's still just a child waiting for what he was supposed to get as a kid. Um, Because I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't get any, I couldn't get a look at myself. I couldn't get a step back from me to see me enough to say, okay, here's what's going on. And the ayahuasca really helped me. Man, it gives you, you can look at through yourself through a microscope or you can look through binoculars and you can do it all at the same time. And so that was a real gift. Um, and uh, yeah. Okay, what's up? Let me get some, something more for you guys, man. This has been a lot about me and I'm sorry about that. Um, oh, we got a miracle. This fellow had called, he, you know, he'd lost his, uh, he'd jump on a bomb in the war. And um, we were talking about having him on as a, uh, as a uh, one of our miracle guests. And let's hear a little more. He called back. <laughs> the Rat King. Big dog. Hey, man. Baby, baby. El Rey de Raton. Uh, just listen to this most recent uh, solo episode, dog, and he mentioned me. Um, I sincerely appreciate you, brother. Sincerely, dude. Uh, Igualmente, brother. Thank you. Thanks for everything, man. Um, and yeah, man, I I did serve uh, in the Marine Corps from uh, 2007 to 2013, dog. Obviously, I had to get out because of my <laughs> leg situation. Oh, sorry to laugh. I think you made me laugh. Bro. Onward. Um. But yeah, man. I don't know. I'd take a one-legged marine, bro. A lot of times over fucking some of these cats is it, that's in that's in somebody's joints, bro. I'd take a damn dude. I would take a fucking two-arm marine if he's walking on his arms, bro. And he could shoot a gun with his with his dick. I fuck that dude could run it, bro. Gang. Uh, much love and respect. You can call me at two zero nine. Okay, great. And I'll stop it right there. You thought we were gonna leave your number out there? That would have been bad. Um. Man, you know, I think this is a great place to, to to pull the episode over to the side because, you know, just the, to hear the joy, the the ability in your voice to have some, some joy, man, when you've had such an experience, you know, such an experience, man, of sacrifice and of, um, I'm sure, of adjustment and of ways to find gratitude now, uh, which are all things that I think we'll, we will talk about you. We'll reach out and we'll get it done. We'll get you on there. Uh, and then in the coming, um, when we get another solo episode, we'll put you on it, man. So we'll figure that out. Uh, if you know a miracle or someone, or you are a miracle of somebody, um, 985-664-9503. Uh, if there's something going on you're struggling with, hit the hotline as well. Look, sometimes it might take a year to hear back from us. Sometimes you might never hear back. Um, we do what we can. Uh, we're going to try to work on it more in the new year, um, about just having maybe somebody on board that that is their job to help moderate, uh, because, you know, we're still figuring it all out. Um, and look, I'm a late bloomer, baby. When it comes to everything, even with business, I didn't want anybody to help me for years. I couldn't let anybody help me. And now I know I need help, you know? I need help on the outside. I need help on the inside. And that's okay, man. Uh, but thank you. Thank you, uh, Marine. I don't know if that's a sergeant. No, Marine, a corporal. Thank you, Marine, uh, for your uh, sacrifice and um, and for your attitude, even just in that call, man. I can hear you excited. You, you know, that's cool. And that's the power of each other because I, I hear you say that, man, and it makes me feel, man, here's a, um, here's a man who has probably who was a really capable man. I mean, Marines are physically capable men, you know, who lost something, who lost a dang, you know, who lost something and can't do as much physical anymore. And he's finding ways, man. You know, he's finding ways to have pride and, uh, and to keep his life going on powerfully um, just gives us all a lot to be thankful for and thankful for you um, and anybody who serves. Uh, and if you just serve your family as a father, if you serve your nieces and nephews as an uncle or an aunt, if you serve your spouse because they're going through a tough time and you get home a few minutes early, and instead of jumping on the couch, you make them a cookie or you write them a little note. 
Um, if you serve your higher power, where you hit your knees and you say, hey, I need some help. Or sometimes I'll just, I, I like to sometimes now just, I like praying for other people that's important in my life. Because I'm not, it's not really a religious thing. It's just me thinking about them. Um, and not thinking about me. We got a lot to be thankful for, baby. Praise God. And uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being a part of my life. Um, I feel so grateful to be able to be here today and to be able to just try and speak honestly. Um, we live in a world where, and in a society, especially in America, where uh, there's a lot of um, caps on if you can communicate honestly or not, or even question things. Um, and we'll try our best to do what we can. And, uh, and that's okay. But you guys be good to yourselves, man. You deserve it. Um, I know you do. I know you do. And uh, what else? Dang, I don't know. I thought we should have got into more funny stuff, but we tried our best, and that's okay. Let's go out the way that we rolled into this bad cat, baby. You know who it is. Right here, I got him for you. Um, gang. I know you've heard it before. A lady sent me a video of her kids singing this yesterday, man. It was cool. I'm just sitting on your front porch Wondering how could I be so far from my home And my mind is somewhere else But when I find it, I'll patch up where it's been Blown. Travis McCready. Now I'm just floating on the breeze. And Happy I'm Thanksgiving, guys. Like Happy Thanksgiving. Make it count. Hug somebody. Hold that hug. Hold the line with it. Feel it in my bones. But it's gonna take a little, little time. For me to set that park and break And let myself on my Shine that light on me I'll sit and tell you my story Shine on me And I will find a song I will sing it just for you that's it, baby. You guys be good to yourself. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll be back next week with um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And he's the space baby, you know. He's that tall space baby, dang. You know, he's that damn who looked at a ladder and said, nah, fuck it. I want more. So uh, intrigued to have him back and intrigued to have you back. Hit the hotline, 985-664-9503. And... Um, that's it, gang.